gets old and doesn't take care of his or her data or his or her specimens. Some of those existing specimens and records are determined. Some of them aren't, which is to say sometimes the expert hasn't gotten around to identifying them. And of those, this is the subject of this course, some of them have been digitized. Right? Some of them haven't. This is another piece of this course, data cleaning. Georeferencing. And data publishing. John's going to give us a, a quick view into data publishing in a bit. And once the data are published in the sense of made available openly uh, via the internet, Obviously, we want them published within standards, ideally Darwin Core. And those data can then be shared and integrated with other data sources. And that's essentially the whole spectrum, right? Now, if we take, you know, this is kind of all of the information that's ever existed in human hands about biodiversity. If we take this and compare it to what's here, this is a small proportion of that. Why? Well, obviously there's more work to do as far as sampling biodiversity around the world. But really, at each one of these steps, we have some information loss. There are obvious things like you know, a museum full of specimens that got destroyed. But those non-digital specimens, those are lost to the world. They can be recovered, but they're lost at the moment. So it's only, imagine a water pipe, and you've got a little hole, a little hole, a big hole, a medium hole, a little hole, a little hole. It's only the water that doesn't go out of that pipe that actually gets here to be usable information. Okay? Now we all, or almost all probably, love doing this work. Right? It's great to get out in the natural world and sample biodiversity. But really, we ought to be thinking about if what we're trying to do is get information that's usable about biodiversity, we ought to be thinking about these leaks. And any one of these leaks that we make go away means that more information flows farther down the pipeline. So this is that end product. <coughs> yes, Pierre. Yeah, uh, of, my, of my concerning is about this reflection about the existing of data and the loss of data. Mm -hmm. I think in Africa, as you are saying, we have a lot of data, a lot, but we need the mo mobilization of this data, and we need to work about this way to make this capture of the data before thinking of the sharing. To me, it's all part of one process. So for example, John showed you when he talked about georeferencing, how you can work 10 or 20% faster because other people have georeferenced and shared yeah. their data. Yeah. yeah. And I'm certain that all sorts of other pieces of that process of data cleaning and georeferencing can be enabled vastly if everybody shares their data. Which is to say, I take care of a collection at the University of Kansas. And we've been digital for a long time, but we've been able to make our data set much better thanks to the existence of first Ornus and then VertNet. 
which is to say by having our data out being looked at, being used by the broader community, our data set has gotten massively better. So I, I would disagree that we ought to build information resources before we worry about sharing. I would say that we should be sharing all through this process, which is to say if we make a data rec record digital, we should be setting all of the quality indicators low because the data record hasn't been cleaned or georeferenced. Yes. And then through that process of data cleaning and georeferencing and such, we can make the data better. And in fact, I didn't put on this, but once we share and integrate the data, we can have backflow that improves our data still further. So to yeah, this gym. I think it concerns only scientists. But scientists in Africa are not the, the only providers. So it's, I think we need some process mm -hmm. to mobilize more data not only from scientists, but from others. Of course. Others providers. Of course. Which is to say you have government agencies, yeah. you have aficionados, yeah. you, NGOs. Uh, to, to my eye, yeah. we, we are all scientists, just at different levels. Mm -hmm. And some people, it's just making a list of the birds at a site or noting a particular insect species. And other people, it's published papers and things like that. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's a community effort. It's a community. And it should be something that is coordinated and cooperative, which is to say, wouldn't it be terrible if some NGO in Togo were to do a huge job and, I don't know, you know capture a big data set regarding Togolese plants? But if they don't share it, mm -hmm. you may have to go and do the same thing. So better working together, those data are available to both. And my experience with these big shared data sets is that there's plenty of intellectual benefit to go around. Maybe I do one analysis and another person does another analysis, but almost never do we step on each other's toes and get into problems. Rather, we benefit from working together. But I agree with you completely that it's more than just you know, museum curators or herbarium curators. It's, a, it's the entire biology community, including the people who don't work with specimens. It's the NGOs, it's government agencies, it's uh, casual observers. Everybody has something to contribute. Okay. Okay, so this is a very interesting question. Yeah, I'll, I'll repeat it. Um, the question is, um, how, basically how much can we assure the safety and the integrity of the information? Now, part of the question was about hacking. And essentially, you know, it, in the typical sense of hacking, you get into somebody's system to get something of value, and then you sell it. You know, maybe it's uh, credit card numbers or something like that. The good thing about biodiversity data is that it really doesn't have value in the sense of, you know, this individual record is worth $20, okay? It has value when you get the whole panorama. But the, the rest of the question was about intellectual property rights. And the comment was that many institutions will not share their data out of concern for intellectual property rights. And there I, I actually disagree with that viewpoint very strongly for this reason. The collection that I curate and the collection that Alex curates and the collections that essentially everybody who takes care of a collection, Dorothy, we didn't make those collections. 
I've been the curator at the University of Kansas for 20 years. And let's say I've contributed 3,000 specimens, bird specimens, to that collection. The people who did the collecting are mostly dead, or old, or still practicing scientists. Am I going to somehow take care of their intellectual property? Or rather, am I going to take the view that a specimen reflects information about the natural world? To me, my intellectual property is what I put into analyzing and interpreting those data. I consider specimens and the data associated with them as a common good. If I have records in my collection from Ghana, they belong as much to the Ghanaians as to me as to anybody else. It's a common good that everybody should have access to. Okay? So, when an institution says intellectual property rights, what intellectual property are they protecting? We all say that the information associated with biodiversity specimens is valuable, and it is. But has anybody ever paid you for it? Nobody's ever paid me for it, and I've been working in this field for 20 years at an institution with a huge collection. You, you know of Berkeley getting paid for some biodiversity data? The value can take the form of use. Okay, I want people to go into my data set, use their own intellectual investment, and develop some exciting product from my data set. Okay? I should really say the University of Kansas Ornithology data set because it isn't mine. It's just entrusted to me while, I, uh, while I'm around and employed. So you have to think very carefully about what is the value that institutions are so busy protecting? Why protect it if it never gives you value? The value comes when I put the University of Kansas data together with the University of California data, together with the British Museum data, together with the Ghanaian zoological collections data, and then I can see bird diversity worldwide, or scorpion bird diversity worldwide, and then I get some intellectual value out of it. So those are some pretty strong feelings, but I've thought about it way too long. Any thoughts on the same line? Other instructors, other people? Alex.